is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Welcome, everyone. Uh, not there. Jacob. I'm going to keep filling in. Maybe I need to get a, a short intro or something like that. We'll look into it. What do we got going on today? Well, we are sideways, a little bit down in the market today. Uh, yes, mini down 3.7%. Russell up uh, about 0.17%. Uh, Dow futures up 0.18. Gold contract down 0.63. Silver sideways copper coming back down a little bit from a uh, minor uh, uptick it had yesterday light sweet crude it's going at 89 we are pretty high right now i think the brent is uh currently 92.22 uh so you know with this we have cpi coming out um cpi is going to be a little bit higher tomorrow because of this uptick in oil uh, the core CPI has been deflating just a little bit. Um, so, you know, it all depends really what the headline is going to kind of be tomorrow and how people react to that. You know, I've even seen in the past, um, it doesn't seem like the market is too dependent on this. Um, but I think we will have a higher CPI going into tomorrow. And then also for September, um, it'll be exceptionally high as well. But if there is a... Um, you know, if there's a big enough focus on the core CPI coming down a little bit, maybe we'll remain unscathed. Um, regardless, uh, it seems like the market kind of just does what it wants to do anyway. Take a look today. Um, well, first here, let's run into this. Okay, the dollar, 104.75. Um, just coming down from that 105 mark from a few days prior. Meta down almost 2%. Google down 0.83%. And Disney <clears throat> covered a little bit. At eighty-four dollars, almost, and then Apple as well. They're releasing the iPhone 15 soon, and hopefully that'll uh, get them a little bit back up um, from what they lost regarding the China news. Steel Dynamics, we hit that major level right here, that 100 mark. We breached low it again. That was one of the last days with volume. It was up at this 101.79 area. Tested it again. Kind of shot through it on some light volume, though. I'm looking at this, if we can get a rejection of this level on some volume, we might go back up. And you see it kind of flirts, right? It hits down here at this 100, you know, 99 level, comes back up and it flirts with that 1010 level. And it's been doing that, you know, really since about June, beginning of June of this year. We'll take a look at Nucor as well. You can see a similar pattern. Um, basically with this consolidation coming back. Now, this started really in July. There was a ramp up in June um, where a Steel Dynamics uh, was already kind of trading in that pattern since then. And we also have a pull down. So what's going on regarding steel? Well, you have a, you have a lot of factors, right? First, I'm, let's talk, before we get into that, let's talk a new core, right? Uh, re regarding steel, new core, I was looking at the short interest for them. And uh, it's only about like, what is, let me get this number exactly. Yeah, short percent of float has risen to 5.73%. Um, the company has recently reported um, that 5.51 million shares sold short, and that's 2.95% uh, of all regular shares that are available for trading. The industry standard for steel is around, uh, I think, 3.25. So there is less short interest open on Nucor, and they're a solid company. People like them. But let's, looking at the fundamental of what's going on with steel, too, uh, you know, obviously there was a huge, huge price run up in 2021. Uh, that's where we saw Steel Dynamics go from around the $58 area, busting up to $79, and now we're trading in the 100s. Uh, Nucor did equally as well. You have slowing demand worldwide because of inflation um, for these manufacturing outputs going down. Uh, obviously, you have the global conflict in uh, Ukraine and Russia, and everyone's involved in that. Uh, and then China as well, which is a, a you know demand steal. Uh, their slowing economy 
um, also has kind of put a price dent. And that's going to be felt a little bit more in India, so not so much impacting us. Um, but, you know, these markets uh, move in somewhat uh, some kind of relation, uh, even if some of these companies aren't exporting on a uh, global level. All right, other large news, Oracle got uh, shredded. Let's take a look here. <laughs> oh, boy. Second. Oh, it wasn't this bad this morning when I was taking a look. Wow. Yeah, trading at the open. Ooh, man. What are we at right here? 114 down to 108. So today losing about 14.8%. So uh, what the heck's going on with that? Uh, so they come up short on revenue. Um, there's other competitors they have as well in this uh, kind of AI field. Uh, however, their contracts are pretty good, so their uh, kind of financial team is just trying to rely on that. Um, but this is quite a significant sell-off. Um, so some of the key points for this is Oracle fell short on license and hardware revenue in the fiscal first quarter. Quarterly revenue guidance was also weaker than expected, and the company announced uh, new database hardware and artificial intelligence software features during the quarter. At the time of, th of this kind of article written, which is earlier today, they're down 9%. Um, it's fallen an extra 6% since then. The earnings were $1.19 per share <clears throat> adjusted versus a 115 per share as expected by analysts. Revenue uh, $12.45 billion versus $12.47 billion as expected. Uh, Oracle's revenue grew 9% year over year in the fiscal first quarter, ending in August 31st. Uh, net income rose to $2.42 billion or $0.86 cents per share. Um, obviously, in June 2022, they closed a 28.2 billion acquisition of Cerner, which is an electronic health record uh, software company. And uh, the, according to them, they're now an accelerated transition of Cerner to the cloud. Oracle's cloud service and license support segment produced 9.5 billion in revenue, up 13%. Uh, but the cloud license and on-premises license segment posted 809 million in revenue, which is off 10% and lower than the 892.7 million consensus that was there prior. Hardware revenue declined 6%, and uh, their cloud infrastructure revenue uh, increased 66%, but that was slowing from 76% in the prior quarter. So there was a slowdown in the company. Um, wow, I mean, is this warranted? I'm not really sure. Uh, now, of course, they have a lot of other competitors um, so we'll kind of see what goes on regarding that. Um, so pretty, pretty nuts shave off from Oracle uh, earlier today. So this is another interesting article too, and it's asking, you know, we're having kind of this slow, it's low volume, but like a slow burn a little bit in some of these stocks. And I lost my headphone there for a second. Give me a moment. And I was mentioning this a little bit uh, last week but you have a lot of uh, large amounts of wealth kind of exiting the stock market and moving into bonds, especially corporate bonds have seen a lot of uh, interest recently um, and then uh, private equity as well. More than half of uh, some of the wealthiest families that were polled in America, accounting for combined net worth of 565 billion. Uh, they increased their allocations and in fixed income while 38% boosted their private equity holdings. And by contrast, 38% reduced their allocation in stocks. Guys, stay tuned. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we get back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar, yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 Internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back. Uh, before we went to the break, we were talking a little bit about um, how some wealthier families and some uh, firms are pulling some of their money out of stocks going into uh, fixed income instruments. So that number again was 38%. Uh, this is a net worth. These are people with a combined net worth of 565 billion, a demographic with this. Um, increased allocations of fixed income, 38% boosting private equity holdings. Uh, by contrast, 38% reducing their allocations in stocks. This is having to do with some fears, uh, something from U.S. China tensions and inflation and market volatility and geo other geopolitical concerns. So there's that for you. Guys, how crazy is this? We talk about cybersecurity on this show all the time. You're we talking a little bit about, uh, oh, and before I even go into this, talk about some kind of serendipitous moment. After uh, my show the other day, when I was talking about um, United Airlines, we were, we were amusing that there might actually be um, you know, some kind of uh, actually like cyber breach as opposed to just a glitch in their computer systems. I went to a cafe later in the day and actually ran into this guy um, who did project management in IT uh, for, not, for not United Airlines, but another, um, another airline company. And I, I brought this up to him and he was dubious too on it being a computer glitch because he says there's so much redundancy in uh, communication between air traffic controllers and pilots and the computers that, um, you know, you could suffer a, a serious collapse in the network and, and still get things going um, and still keep them moving. So, uh, you know, something to muse over. Um, and again, these companies do not need to report if they've had a breach in their capacity. However, MGM Resorts did decide to report on it. Uh, slot machines go down in cyber attack on the firm. Certain systems were shut down due to cybersecurity issue, the firm said. 
Uh, it added that, it, uh, uh, that its facilities remained operational. One customer at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas uh, said she had walked into the wrong room because the hotel's digital keys were malfunctioning and said the staff had to distribute physical keys. Uh, staff offered her a complimentary stay as a compensation. Um, she also posted a video on TikTok of slot machines and gambling machines that the resort switched off in a statement posted on the application formerly known as Twitter. Oh, it even says that. I thought I was being clever. Anyways, MGM Resorts uh, said it has begun an investigation with assistance of leading external cybersecurity experts. Pretty nuts. We get it. This happens more often uh, than you think, folks. I still think going forward, this is going to be a massive industry. It already is, but uh, commercially speaking, it might get a little bit more, um, you know, gas as time goes on. So, wait one second, computer is doing that fun freeze up thing. All right, we got to go now. Talking a little bit about steel and just kind of a global slowdown in manufacturing. This happened in America as well, not as much. This is from my Financial Times, looking at what's going over, um, you know, in, uh, on the continent out there. Uh, this is the German builders are warning of a crisis as they scrap record number of projects. The proportion of construction groups reporting lack of new orders surged to 44.2% in August. So, you know, Germany itself is fixing to have a, a pretty tough uh, financial year, and their economy might con contract a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, America is far more resilient um, but, you know, when something's going wrong here uh, in industry, if the Germans have something similar, it is going pretty negative for them. And we can get a little insight um, of just what's going on globally with all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, cancel building projects and financial distress among landlords and builders in Germany have hit their highest levels since reunification three decades ago. Intensifying the construction crisis in the EU's biggest economy. Uh, hit by rising interest rates, soaring costs, and weaker demand, 20.7% of construction companies said that they had been forced to scrap a project in August, up from 18.9% in the previous month, according to a survey of 500 businesses by researchers at the IFO Institute in Munich. This is a pretty uh, intense kind of situation here. Obviously, there's still some buildings going on in America. It's still relatively strong, um, and Germany is in a far, far, far worse situation. But just looking on a global level of kind of what's going on and how uh, this new you know, global interest rate increase is kind of affecting different places, I think is, uh, is interesting, uh, nonetheless. Moving forward, staying with tech bit, um, I would recommend checking this out. Elon Musk and Zuckerberg are in talks, are gonna be in talk uh, within the Senate forum on Wednesday about AI ruling. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, Senate Majority Leader uh, Chuck Schumer of New York, a Democrat, is uh, convening an inaugural AI Insight Forum on Capitol Hill Wednesday, bringing together some of the biggest names in tech to help lawmakers understand the technology and how to regulate it. Attendees include Tesla, Elon Musk, uh, Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, and uh, Google's CEO, uh, Sundar Pichai, and Schumer hopes the meeting will provide a foundation for future legislation. This will be super interesting to listen to and um, you know, I recommend when you have time and TFNN isn't having their programming that you check this out. Uh, Chief Executive of C3.AI said, AI execs are playing a rope-a-dope with lawmakers, asking them to please regulate us, uh, but there's not enough money and intellectual capital to ensure millions of algorithms are safe. And they know this is impossible. Wednesday's forum is the latest stab by lawmakers and companies to get ahead of potential disruptions wrought by generative AI to jobs and society as a whole. Uh, they fear a, re a repeat of being absent after they largely ignored the harmful aspects of social media years earlier, which regulators recall with dread and guilt. And even, you know, furthermore, with what happened, you know, with some of the labor drain um, out of the U.S. around like the 80s and stuff like that. Um, I know this is like a natural thing when society progresses, but it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we can't figure out better ways of uh, progressing forward. So I will definitely be tuning into that. Uh, I'll probably watch some of the highlights after work tomorrow, um, but it seems uh, pretty cool to check that out. I've already spoken about this as well, but there's some more um, information going on, number-wise in particular, is the uh, credit card usage is jumping as consumers in July add $10.4 in debt. The American consumer really is about uh, 
to have a have a hard time right here. And then defaults are increasing as well. Uh, revolving credit grew 9.6 billion, mostly in credit card debt, while consumers also added another 773 million for auto loans and other non-revolving debts. The Federal Reserve report on consumer credit showed a total outstanding credit of nearly five trillion dollars. And delinquencies at retailers like Nordstrom and Macy's show more credit strain could be coming. And you know, this is so nuts too, and I like I think about this sometimes and like what really led to everyone being able to purchase so much during the past two years. You know, obviously you had stimulus, but is that, you know, really enough? And I just I think back. Uh, to a friend I had, and he was an EMT, and he had been an EMT, I think maybe six months or something like that before quarantine really hit. And EMTs do not make, you know, a lot of money, which is a shame because their job is so, uh, you know, integral to society. Uh, I think he was making something like 15 bucks an hour or something like that in the area. And then all these government uh, contracts started coming in regarding COVID. And I'll talk a little bit more when we get back from it. Anyways, these guys were making an insane amount of money. And I'll talk a little bit more when we get back. Folks, stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insight, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
So we're talking about increasing uh, credit card usage and then delinquencies that are following. And I was, we were kind of musing on why um, people were spending so much over quarantine and how I got to it. And I was talking about a guy that I knew uh, whose EMT was making about 15 bucks an hour. Then he started going on these government contracts. And obviously, you know, especially with nurses, they get hazard pay, um, which is even more. But then he started making about 38 bucks an hour working at the border. Uh, and then some nurses that I knew were making uh, unbelievable money. I, I knew one who was making like 78 bucks an hour as a travel nurse and the hazard pay was so high. And you know, there's a, like, at least for RNs, there's something around like 5 million in the US and uh, plenty more healthcare workers and other workers who received hazard pay um, and were on contracts. They're making so much money. I personally think at least in the area that we were in, uh, you know, here in St. Pete where uh, headquarters is, um, that that was a major driver for a lot of price increases. And so, you know, one could think as well, I mean, we'll, we'll talk too about wages getting depressed and things getting a little bit harder for people, especially with price increases, which absolutely adds to people using uh, more consumer credit. Um, but I think too, some people started living in it within a certain level of means and uh, in some ways haven't really downsized on it. Uh, to this article, the total consumer credit increased about 10.4 billion and that includes an increase of 773 million for non-revolving credit. And that's auto and school loans. And the, uh, that brings the US outstanding consumer credit to about 5 trillion. Uh, of that 1.27 trillion is in revolving credit and that's credit cards, home uh, lines of equity, um, and then other lines of credit. Yeah, pretty insane. And this is in what they're saying here is inflation puts the, pushes the debt higher, which, which we all know. Um, furthermore, on this, you have a lot of businesses kind of indicating to the Federal Reserve that the wage gains are subsiding. As over the tw uh, 12 months ending in June this year, the wages were increasing by uh, more than 4.5%. Um, and we're having a slight decrease. And of course, also, you're getting, you know, not as many people hired and job market's getting a little tighter and stuff like that. Um, and, and you might see an increase in defaults as more people uh, for the short term are moving into using uh, different lines of credit. So, you know, this is something to be pretty cognizant of going forward. Um, and I, I think it does show some kind of like shaky situation uh, for the U.S. consumer economy. You know, it's important to not always look at like this, how the stocks are doing and how the market's doing and how fixed income is doing and all of that. I mean, you have to look at what the consumer is uh, going through as well. You know, these are two different lines of the economy, but they're, but they're both equally important. So, Let's see here. I'm trying to pull it up. Right. Here we are. In further news, uh, there's some regulations going on at NYC. This is happening in St. Pete, too. This is surrounding Airbnb and Verbo uh, regulations. So I can say, you know, north of where we live uh, is a city called Largo. And the, I have some family members who live up there. And, uh, you know, these traditional, you know, neighborhoods with, you know, whatever kind of names like Shady Oak or something like that, um, which are just single family ranch style homes. I have a family member who lives in one of these neighborhoods and he doesn't have a single neighbor in his immediate proximity. So, I mean, two houses down to the left, to the right, uh, behind him or in front uh, that have actual families living in them. Uh, these, <laughs> these are all... Airbnbs or Verbos, and I mean, obviously he hates it because you get all these, you know, young guys moving in uh, for some times, and they just want to party, and they're coming uh, to the area for a short amount of time and don't really care. And I mean, this is like it can really plummet. Um, one, it increases the price of housing, you know, because all these are getting like eaten up by people who want to rent them out, um, and it decreases the quality of life for families who actually live in these areas. Now, this is a little bit different in New York City. Um, just the living style in general. Uh, but short-term rentals in New York City recently became subject to new restrictions. Uh, in New York City, the mayor's, of, uh, the mayor's office of Special Enforcement Administration of the new rules have been uh, underway for just a week, uh, with the OSC's initial phase kicking off September 5th. Under the law, anyone who offers short-term rentals has to become registered with the OSC and has to follow the rules, like ones that bar them from renting an entire registered dwelling unit for less than 30 days, according to the regulation. Local Law 18 also prohibits booking platforms from processing transactions for unregistered short-term rentals. 
This creates a clear path for hosts who follow the city's long-standing laws and protects travelers from illegal and unsafe accommodations. You know, I still think going on too, as I, there are already laws, especially like in um, you know New Orleans and Atlanta and stuff like that. They're pushing some laws on how many Airbnbs, Airbnbs can be in one area, how long you can rent it out for, so on and so forth. Um, these are still pretty strong companies, fundamentally speaking. So, but I think it's important, you know, to keep in mind uh, what different local governments are doing uh, regarding, because uh, I mean, the, I mean, Airbnb in particular has become a massive, massive company. So. Peloton is in some tough water yet again uh, with their product just being extraordinarily dangerous. Let me see here. We'll go on the monthly. You took a big loss right here. Um, furthermore, they're under a lawsuit now uh, claiming that the Peloton had, had instantly killed someone uh, by severing an artery. And we've heard this before, and this was like a big, big kind of mud on their face. These are dangerous for children, um, and, and they, just, they just weren't safe, uh, you know, kind of devices. Um, but this one, the man fell, and it, it hit an artery of his, so now they're being sued, and that opens them up to even, you know, more kind of regulation, and maybe they have to pull products off, which are already in a tough spot because they had such an oversupply of product, um, and that really tanked their stock price when they weren't able to move it out. Uh, according to the lawsuit, this individual was completing a core workout, which required him to dismount from his Peloton bike and do some exercises on the floor. When he attempted to rise again, he used his bike to help him get up, and the equipment allegedly spun around and impacted him, uh, in, you know, in his neck. And it just, yeah, so some pretty nuts kind of news with that. And it's just some more bad news uh, for Peloton going forward. We were talking about some scams yesterday. <clears throat> about some people using AI to, uh, you know, mimic loved ones in distress, and they would uh, basically extract money from the from the target. And with student loan forgiveness, and one of the things I was saying is, anytime there's something new going on and that's going to involve some kind of financial transaction, and I brought up, for instance, you know, uh, like aid to the Ukraine or something like that, right? Um, there's going to be a scam, and it's getting very complex. This one, since student loans are resuming pretty soon, um, is a, basically a forgiveness scam. And uh, it's quoting the full discharge of all your federal student loans, and you click this link here. So scammers are trying to prey on some of the 44 million Americans uh, who are set to start making their first payments in more than three years. More than 350,000 student loan-related robocalls have been placed in two weeks, roughly as many as in the nine prior weeks. Um, and this is from an organization that analyzes calls. Jump in student debt-related scams have come as the first payments on college loans are set to resume in October, following a pandemic-era pause that began in 2020. And, uh, yeah, essentially what this is going to do is try to give them sensitive information and uh, you'll forgive the loans and they'll be uh, helped out. That's obviously not true. If you get this call, be very uh, wary. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. All right, so we have a kind of sideways market right now. The NQ down almost a uh, full percentage point. Dow futures up 0.12%, and the ES um, kind of moving down here. Let's get on the daily. Yeah, so retesting its lows here, almost. We'll see where we close with that. Again, it's so hard to tell, especially with you know we can we're gonna you know it's probably gonna be safe to say that the CPI will be higher. Um, than had been originally anticipated tomorrow um, due to the increase in oil prices. We'll see really what the, what the core CPI is going to look like, um, and that, in my opinion, will be the ma major mover. Um, if it's not good, we, you know, I, I think in the past people hadn't really fully gathered uh, that these interest rate hikes were going to increase, and I just remember, like, um, I think like in May or something like that, when Powell was talking, I mean, he said, like, these interest rate hikes weren't over yet and the resounding response by a lot of the market at least you know online was like hey right on the economy is doing okay and it's you know there's just a disconnect there with what leadership is saying and what people are wanting to do and maybe the reality of the situation is, is really coming through so you know we're seeing uh you know a flocking out from stocks again into these fixed incomes and uh you know securities so particularly corporate bonds but um you know if if Core CPI isn't good tomorrow. We might see an even larger drop as well, when in the past it was kind of a shakeup of what was going to happen with the market depending on um, inflation numbers. Take a look. Steel dynamics still pretty flat. Tesla's selling off just a little bit at 2.27%. I think this is just profit taking. Honestly, they had such a significant run up uh, the past few days. The dollar still staying pretty steady at 104. Uh, Meta down 1.87%. Not much has changed. Uh, since the beginning of the show. DraftKings got into some hot water yesterday. I don't know if it really meant anything for them. They are down 2.66% right now. Um, what had happened is, you know, they had the Jets game yesterday and the Mets and the Yankees. Um, they, they had like a New York kind of, uh, this is rough, man. Yeah, the promotion uh, that required three New York-based teams, which are the Yankees, Mets, and the Jets, to win their games Monday. Um, and the header above that was in memory of uh, September 11th. Obviously a little bit tone depth. Uh, 
so they, they got in a little bit of hot water on that. To say if this price decrease really has anything to do with that, uh, you know, hard to say. Um, but regardless, that's what they've been up to. Again, not a good, not a good look. Um, some more social kind of developments going on. Uh, California fast food and healthcare workers poised to win major salary increases. Uh, nearly 1 million California workers are poised to win major salary increases after labor unions flex their collective muscle and the state's Democratic-led legislature. And it really is insane to see kind of almost a, a major resurgence of uh, some of the unions. You know, there's been a lot of, uh, especially this year, especially with inflation going up, you know, in an attempt to kind of d depress wage growth by the Fed and even employment by the Fed. Um, you know, one could probably assume uh, that you would hear more noise from unions going forward. Uh, most of the state's 500,000 fast food workers would be paid at least $20 per hour next year under a new bill aimed at ending a standoff between the industry and labor unions over wages and working conditions. About 455,000 healthcare workers, not doctors and nurses, but people who do everything else at hospitals, which is diocese clinics and other facilities, will see their salaries rise to at least $25 per hour over the next 10 years in a separate bill. And, and how you could be making that much in California and surviving, I, I'm not really uh, privy to, because that seems like, it, I mean, that's rough to live even in this area on that kind of salary. Uh, both proposals must first pass the state legislature and be signed into law by Newsom. Uh, proposal have been blessed by both labor unions and industry groups. And that would be a huge win for, uh, for unions going forward. The minimum wage is already high, uh, excuse me, among the highest in the country at 1550, but still I feel like that's just, that would be a rough time working with that kind of, and especially in California, it's just so expensive. And you know, this is one of the positive things with, with unions, you know, it, it helps people get together and, and maybe argue for um, higher pay. So regardless, moving forward with that, uh, Salesforce has some more developments. Um, they've launched an AI assistant across its apps. That's Slack, Antablue, Tableau, <laughs> okay. Enterprise software maker Salesforce on Tuesday launched a generative AI tool that would be available across its suite of apps from instant messaging services to Slack and data vis visualization tool Tableau and can be uh, tailored by its clients to meet their needs. Again, this is the major thing that generative AI will do is act as your own kind of uh, personal assistant. The assistant called the Einstein Copilot can summarize video calls, deliver personalized answers to customer questions and generate emails for marketing campaigns among others. Uh, the company said ahead of its Dreamforce conference. I'm, I'm laughing at that because there's been this like meme going on online uh, with people who are in arguments with their significant others and they're using AI uh, to kind of write apologies or argue for them, which, you know, kind of sketchy. But regardless, uh, the San Francisco-based company had launched the Einstein GPT Gen AI product in March. The company also doubled its venture, uh, uh, doubled its venture capital fund for generative AI startups uh, to 500 million in June. So that's pretty good lookout for Salesforce. They've been doing pretty okay uh, this year as well. Let's see. Crypto, big sell off in the past few days. If we get the exact number on it, it's 185 million liquidated in crypto sell offs as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin plummet amid volatile market. I also think, you know, uh, Elon Musk can kind of influence uh, these things as well, especially Dogecoin. That's been his pump and dump thing. And he came out recently saying uh, that he doesn't uh, see the blockchain as such a positive thing. Um, and that had some ripples, at least within the Dogecoin community. Uh, but over the past 24 hours, it would have been 48 by this point. Uh, the cryptocurrency market experienced significant liquidations, totaling over 185.97 million. These liquidations included long and short positions, with longs accounting for over 144 million and shorts totaling 41 million. Blockchain data reveals most prominent firms such as Jump Trading, Wintermute, and Abraxas Capital made substantial deposits of cryptocurrency to various exchanges during Monday's market sell-off. These deposits were made in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Arbitrum's ARB token. Uh, an asset manager at Abraxas Capital transferred 14,000 ETH worth about 22.5 million. So there's a big exodus out of this. And so see, it goes, I, again, I still think the relationship between the, you know, upper market beyond interest rates, right? The, the relationship between, you know, the dollar, cryptocurrency, 
other assets and stuff like bonds and, and bills and stuff like that. It, it's I don't know if it's so set out right now, um, but there's obviously a movement into taking quite a bit. I Really what's happening is there is talk in the G20 about doing some kind of global regulation on crypto, um, which would be a huge L for all holders and especially for those that have uh, some kind of ideological attachment to things like Bitcoin and Ethereum as a way to kind of um, extricate themselves from the traditional financial system. Uh, you know, I, I think that was a hard drive to sell uh, anyway, um, but I, I personally believe this is why they're moving it out, just to get some extra cash and protect themselves if anything happens in the near future. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back for a short segment. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look here in the uh, ES Mini, down about 5 point, excuse me, 0.56%. Russell sideways, the NQ still down, just cracked over uh, one percent right now uh, on some lower volume this crackdown here at least in the es mini um was not as high as what we've had earlier especially during the open on that uptick um some quicker news and this is regarding tesla they're um about to invest 15 billion in the mexican uh factories that they have a state governor in mexico said on monday that tesla and its suppliers would invest 
$15 million over the next two years in a factory that is still under construction, an amount that is triple what the Mexican officials previously, previously announced. Um, Musk said his company would open a gigafactory in northern Nuevo Leon state, uh, part of electric car makers push to expand its global footprint. At the time, Musk did not detail the investment, but Mexican officials said the factory uh, would involve a $5 billion investment at the time of it being uh, initially disclosed. On some interesting news for the day, kind of along the lines with some of the science uh, information I like, to, I like to bring at the end, uh, it turns out that the FDA says Sudafed doesn't work, <laughs> which is just wild to me. Uh, the leading decongestant used by millions of Americans looking for relief from a stuffy nose is likely no better than a dummy pill, according to the government experts who reviewed the latest research on the long-questioned drug ingredient. Advisors to the Food and Drug Administration voted unanimously on Tuesday against the effectiveness of the ingredient found in popular versions of Sudafed, Allegra, Dayquil, and uh, other medications. Modern studies, when well-conducted, are not showing any improvement in congestion with phenylephrine. Uh, that's one of the doctors who's looking at it, and this is he's an allergy specialist, which is just nuts. Uh, the FDA assembled its outside advisors to take a look at phenylephrine, uh, which became the main drug in the over-the-counter decongestions when medicines with an older ingredient, pseudoephedrine, were moved behind pharmacy counters. How about that, guys? Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. We have Tom O'Brien up next, the man himself. Uh, I will be with you tomorrow and throughout the rest of the week, and then we'll have Tommy back the week following. Have a great rest of your day.